we're looking at some control surface software for the iPad. This is the AC7 Pro from Saitura Software. If I just launch it here, it looks a little bit like a Mackie control. And indeed, that's sort of what it's modeled on. Let me show you how you set it up. I'm working on OS X on a Mac. I'm going to be using this with Logic Studio. So I need to download a couple of programs. First one is DS MIDI Wi-Fi. I launch that. It's just a little widget that lies around in the background. And what it does is it translates the incoming MIDI over Wi-Fi from the AC7 Pro software into uh, a sort of pipe that I can then squirt into the door and use it as a MIDI port effectively. So I'll minimize that. I also need to download this program called MIDI Pipe and a special set of settings from the Saitura website. Double click that and launch that. What that enables me to do is to be able to read the track names back into the AC7 Pro so I've got a bit more visual feedback, makes it all a bit more kind of uh, proper Mackie control like. Right, you will need a Wi-Fi connection to run AC7 Pro, otherwise it's not going to be able to com communicate with your computer. So I've launched AC7 Pro, as you can see, just have a quick whip around the interface. Eight faders, this is multi-touch. Each channel with record, solo, mute, and a little channel strip here, which gives you a volume readout and the channel strip. Each one with a select button. There's transport control, track left and right, bank left and right, master fader, a little uh, readout which can display in beats or sempty. Uh, jog and shuttle scroll wheel which can either scrub if you go into audio mode and there's a switch you can switch that into a kind of cursor with zoom so you can affect the display of the of the door through the AC7 Pro. There's also a number of different modes here obviously you've got track, send, plug-in mode, EQ mode, pan, instrument, a bit more on those later, uh, automation modes and uh, you can save and undo and a few other useful functions that are very similar to the Mackie control. And now what I've got to do is to install a Mackie control surface into Logic. This does have other modes as well, uh, which you can also use. There's uh, Logic control mode, digital performer mode, Pro Tools mode, and Mackie control mode. And they have very slightly different configurations for each one. I'm a bit confused as to why I can't use this in logic control mode. Uh, it does say to use Mackie control on the instructions on the Saitura website. Maybe there will be an upgrade. So to install this, now I go to my control surfaces setup. I'm going to install a new control surface, which will be the Mackie control. I'm going to add that. You can see it does a little flip there. I've then just got to set the output port to the MIDI pipe software and the input port from DSM MIDI out. Right, uh, I should just go into track mode. Now, what you can see is there are the track names and the volume settings, and I can bank back here. And you'll notice up above my little head here, there's uh, highlights on the tracks that it's currently affecting. So if I just remove myself from the picture and bank or move track by track, you can see which set of tracks it's affecting. It's probably a good time to bring up latency and how this interface feels. So if I just bring up the mixer, you can see here, and I'll move a few faders around, it's actually quite responsive. It seems to take a moment for the initial command to take hold, and then once you're sort of in communication, it's quite fast. There's a little click, I don't know if you can hear that in the background, that it makes out of the iPad speaker, so you know you're doing stuff. Right, another thing I want to do here is write some automation, because my bass track... is a bit loud towards the end, so I've got it selected here. I'm just going to go into touch mode, and pull it down towards the end of this passage, because it opens up it's a bit loud, so I'll just show you how easy that is. And in touch, ready to go. Go into read mode, show my automation. There we go, really that simple. Nice and easy, it's very good for writing automation exactly. And as you can see the curve is just there and exactly what I wrote in and uh, if I want to redo it again it's really no problem. So I can flip into touch, read, latch, any time I like, just by using these. Nice.
while we're here, it's probably worth looking at uh, a couple of the other assigned modes. I'll just select a track here, and if I hit the EQ button, it brings up uh, the EQ panel. Now, uh, I press flip mode, and it gives me a readout of what's going on on the screen, which I can scroll through the parameters via these left and right arrows, but I have to be in, obviously, the cursor mode. So, for instance, if I want to affect the gain or change a bit of something else, I can do that. Also, if I go into pan mode, I can affect the pan here, and the same goes for effect sends. And to be honest, um, the plug-in and the other modes, they're a bit fiddly and quite hard to get your head around. It's not quite as intuitive as the Mackie control, although I personally find that to be pretty unintuitive when it comes to controlling those sort of parameters. I think the AC7 Pro is best suited for simple mixer functions, mute solo, automation, and transport control. And for that, it really excels very well. I mean, you can imagine using this in a situation where you couldn't get access to the keyboard, say if you're a drummer, or you're a bass player, or a guitarist, and you want to play with your instrument and have control. Or maybe you've got a big modular synth set up, and you're over there in the corner tweaking, and you want to have access without running other keyboards and additional monitors and stuff. Really handy. I mean, for 10 bucks, six quid, I don't think you can go wrong. But to say that it's a fully functioning Mackie or Logic Control or that sort of thing is probably going a little bit too far. But in my opinion, 10 bucks, well spent.